Well, for those of you who are here today, and uh, for those of you who are uh, watching, uh, fall started this week, and it's uh, very apparent here uh, in the valley. It's a wonderful time of year. I love it. Um, and it's such a beautiful time of year. I, I, something struck me that, have you noticed that all the songs written with the word September in it are all sad? I, I don't get it. It's a beautiful time of year. I feel upbeat when the leaves change, the nights get chilly, the underbrush turns red, and the aspens turn golden with sometimes a hint of, of orange. Fall is glorious, and it reminds me of, of just how amazing God is. This time of year reminds me to say, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, in the midst of all that's going on. Well, as we've moved into fall, some of you have heard me talking about football, and I love watching football at all levels. Now, I know not everyone likes or even cares about the sport, and that's more than okay. But whether or not you are a fan, I believe the sport is good for the American psyche. Football can be a healthy distraction for a few hours, and there's nothing wrong from taking a break from all the bad news and the heartache. In fact, pausing for something like football can give our minds a few moments to reset and gain some perspective. It can help us lighten up a bit and spend some time on something that is not earth-shattering or life-changing. And one thing about the sport is that many people have favorite teams along with those they really cannot stand for a variety of reasons. Yes, people take sides and root for their own teams while booing at others. But what's really interesting is that after most games, Fans of different teams often come together and have a beer together and some fun. Lots of fans know that what's most important is the shared love of the sport more than what team is playing. Wouldn't it be nice if in America today we could disagree about substantive issues yet still have a beer together and have some fun and celebrate our shared love of country across the divides or what team we're on or support. Now, you may or may not agree with me, and what follows is not a political statement. But through my eyes, my very imperfect eyes, through what I have come to understand about Jesus after all these years, there is so much going on right now in our country that makes me feel upset, sad, sometimes disgusted, and not infrequently angry. And I don't like these feelings at all. So much is happening every day that I believe is the antithesis of how Jesus asks us to live our lives. Yet it is in this time in which we are living in which so much is amiss and wrong and off track. It is during this time that I believe down in my core that this tough time is also one of an astonishing opportunity. You see, we have the chance as people, as individuals, to spend our energy to explore where we are right now in this time of crisis in our journey in faith, where we really are in our walk with Jesus. This is a time in which the rubber meets the road when it comes to our faith. This is a time in which the degree to which we follow Jesus is made apparent to ourselves and to other people around us. This is the time, I believe, that God invites each of us into a deeper, more profound, life-changing relationship with God. To take a look at how we can love more in light of all those that are loving less. And to get our hearts in the right place. Yes, when it comes to our faith, the good news is this is a time of tremendous opportunity in our walk with Jesus. The other day I was watching a football game. There was not much time left on the clock. For one team, things were not going well. The team appeared out of sorts and not at all unified. So the coach did what lots of coaches do. The coach called a timeout and called the players on the field to the sidelines for a chat. And as I watched the scene unfold, as the coach talked to the team, it got me thinking and wondering. During this time when things are not going well, could it be that God is actually calling you and calling me 
to pause and to go to the sidelines for a chat with God. And if indeed this is the case, which I believe it may very well be, I don't think God is calling us over to chastise us or to blast us or scream at us or to point out what we're doing wrong to make us feel terrible. Rather, I believe God is calling us over to the sidelines to invite each of us to pause for a moment and take a look at ourselves and ask ourselves, where are we really with the transforming love of God in our lives? In essence, during this time of crisis, I sense that God is asking me and asking you, where is your heart right now? It is immersed in me or off somewhere else in a faraway place. Now, I've come to realize that one of the best ways to take a look at my heart and where I am with God is to take a close look at my actions and what I do, to assess what those actions are, to affirm those actions that reflect the heart and love of God, and to work on my heart in those places my actions suggest I am distracted from where God invites my focus to be. Our gospel reading today from Matthew is a wonderful reading, and the reading today actually takes place on a Monday during the week. The day before, on Sunday before the Monday of the events of this story, had been quite the day for Jesus. On that Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. It was Palm Sunday, the day that began the fateful week in which by Friday afternoon, Jesus would be dead. Well, Jesus ran into lots of people in the temple on that Sunday whose actions demonstrated, whose actions demonstrated their hearts were not with God but rather focused on self-interest and an attitude of heck with the other guy. Jesus went to the temple and literally turned things over. His actions reflected that his heart was in a place of righteous anger. Well, after these events and others, Jesus left Jerusalem for the night. And the next day, Monday morning, Jesus comes into the city again. Immediately is confronted with religious types, fundamentalists who believe they knew absolutely everything about God, who was in and who was out, and where people were out were headed. They challenge Jesus with some questions, and in response, Jesus tells them the parable we heard Bob read today. In the parable, a man had two sons. He went to one son and asked him to go to work in the vineyard. The son replied, nope, sorry dad, I'm not going to do that. But he did it anyway. He went to the vineyard and he worked. The other man, the man went to his other son and asked him to work in the vineyard as well. The other son said, sure, I'll go work in the vines. And despite what he said, however, he never got near the vineyard. Jesus then asked the hard-hearted religious folks there, which son did the will of the father? And they reply, obviously, The son who went to work, despite what he said, they replied to Jesus. And Jesus then says, in essence, that's right. And what is more, the kinds of people you religious folks condemn. Actually, their hearts are in the right place. And you can tell their hearts are in the right place by looking at their lives right now and how they have been changed by God and how they are different than they used to be because of their love of God. Your actions, however, don't reflect God. Your hearts are not in the right place. It is here that Jesus illustrates the old adage, actions speak louder than words. But he also teaches us that our actions reflect where our hearts are. And as I think about my own life, my own actions, the actions of others that I observe, I believe that God is inviting us now in this tumultuous time as people of faith to take a look at our actions to help us see where our hearts really are. And God's point is not to condemn us or drive us to guilt or belittle us or throw caustic statements at us. Although some of us may need to turn some things around and get back to God's way of doing things, the message today is not you are rotten. 
Rather, the point today is that God invites us at this very difficult time to pause, to go to the sidelines, if you will, to take a look at our hearts with the help of God. And God wants us to look at our hearts because God wants to help us each be who God made us uniquely to be and to draw us moment by moment by moment, day after day, into a deeper and deeper, more transforming relationship with God. A relationship that will change our lives and our hearts from the inside out, especially during these trying times. And the deeper our relationship with God is, the more our actions will reflect that relationship. It's like God is saying to us, I want more of you. I want you to turn to me more and more every day. I love you. I want my love to be what your life is about. I want my love to heal you, to change you, to free you, to guide you, to direct your actions. I want you to see things in people, all people, through my eyes. I need you to be my presence during these difficult days. I need you to go back out onto the field and do it my way. These are just a few reasons God is inviting us to do a heart check at this time. And again, we can tell where our hearts are in part by looking at our actions. I found a great little article written by a fellow named Clarence Haynes Jr. It has some good guidance for those of us that want to ponder our actions as a reflection of where our hearts are. He notes that our actions can reveal a lot about us, that they can conceal a lot about us, that they can confuse others, or they can confirm a lot about us. Our actions can reveal, conceal, confuse, and confirm, and I want to take just a few very brief moments taking a look at each of these. First, our actions often reveal who we are. First, a quick caveat. I get frustrated and I get down. And when I'm in that place, I may not always act in my preferred way. The point is, just because sometimes we're acting in an off-base way doesn't mean down deep our hearts are way off base. It could mean we're just in a bad spot which is why we need to cut others and ourselves some slack. That said, however, repeated actions, those ways of being and living that happen over and over and over and over again, can indeed reveal what is happening deep within us and in our hearts and in our relationship with God. If a person is yelling and screaming at people, it's a good indication to me that the person's heart is not in a good place and far, far away from God. If a person slams and belittles and puts down others, if that's the norm of their actions, that person's heart is not likely in a place that God is inviting that person to be. Conversely, sometimes we encounter no people who are peaceful, kind, thoughtful, generous, and attentive across circumstances. Not always, but generally across circumstances. People whose conduct is gentle and uplifting, you can feel their hearts are Jesus. There's so many examples that I could illustrate this point with, but our hearts are revealed by our actions. Our actions reveal where our hearts are. Our actions can not only reveal, they can conceal. Sometimes our actions can be a cover-up for what's happening inside. For example, maybe I become hypervigilant about how I or other people are acting. And maybe instead of living by the love of God, I run around telling people what they should and should not do. Perhaps I spend time telling others how wonderful I am and a person without flaws. Maybe I try and act like the perfect Christian, or conversely, maybe I act in terrible ways day after day. Or maybe I always act happy with a smile on my face as if everything is always wonderful. All of this and so many other ways of being may actually reflect, reflect where our hearts are not. If I don't feel so good, I may try and convince others how great I am. If I feel like I fall short and don't measure up, maybe I'll become a policeman of what is right and wrong. If I'm down, perhaps I'll act in the hyper-happy ways. All these illustrate 
But sometimes our actions actually can conceal what's going on within our hearts. And our actions can not only reveal and conceal, but they can also confuse, and not necessarily confuse us, but confuse others. Clarence Haynes writes, in an adapted form, actions can confuse those around you. And even if you are confusing to others, they, in fact, your actions are showing people that your heart is with God, whether or not they know it. For example, if someone's not nice to you and you act in a kindly way in response, or if a person expects you to act angrily and you respond with mercy, or if someone wrongs you, yet your actions demonstrate forgiveness, these in so many other ways can confuse other people but actually reflect that our hearts are close to God. And finally, aside from revealing, concealing, confusing, our actions can confirm who we are and where we are and where our hearts are. Clarence Haynes writes with adaptations. When you respond with patience when you used to fly off the handle, when you exercise self-control, when you exhibit kindness and compassion when you used to act in self-centered ways, when you show love for people with whom you disagree, such others and others like them can confirm that we are walking closely with Jesus and that our hearts are in a good place with God. So here's some things to think about as I wrap up today. These are some of the most difficult times of our collective life. Very trying times. We're having to do new norms that don't make us happy. The country is totally torn up. All the realities we're struggling with. This is an astonishingly difficult time to be a human being. And the upheaval we have around us can unleash upheaval within. We can get sidetracked. We can be hard on ourselves. We can be hard on others. We can become separated from whom we know we really want to be. We can feel out of sorts. We can feel stressed and sad. We engage in ways we see on television that are not very pretty. And we can experience all of these things and more despite knowing what our blessings are and even in the midst of being grateful for all that's right. God knows how hard this time is on us all. Yet I believe God is gently and lovingly calling us to the sidelines to pause for a few moments. Not just today, but each and every day. To check in with God. To do a heart check to go down deep within, to look at our actions as a lens through which we can honestly see where we are. God really only wants one thing from you and from me, ultimately, and that is to accept and to take in and be immersed in God's boundless, unlimited, unconditional, unimaginable love. Love you and I desperately need right now and God invites our hearts to stay in that place of love and when we do it will show by how we act no matter what the score happens to be out on the field and let us pray